Six months ago, I talked about Toeball Number 1, one of the weird and creative fighting games Squaresoft had under their belt developed by Dream Factory, a company that was comprised of multiple people that worked on Tekken and Virtual Fighter, including the man who created both, Seishi Ishii. Now it's time to dive deeper into the legacy of Dream Factory, with the arcade fighter ported over to the PS1, Er guys, God bless the ring. Can we just talk about that name for a second? It has got to be up there with one of the best names for a video game in existence. I honestly can't tell what I like about it more. The subtitle itself, or the fact that Urgeis is German for ambition. So really the name of this game is Ambition God Bless the Ring. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm simple minded, but that really amuses me. But, we can only admire the name of this game for so long, so let's stop wasting time and get into the next game in Dream Factory's repertoire. Years ago, a mysterious weapon constructed from an unknown material was discovered in the remains of an ancient castle. This weapon came to be known as Urgeis, and it was eventually decided to be presented to the winner of a tournament that determined the world's greatest fighter. In time, Urgeis became the name and symbol of the tournament itself. On the cusp of the tournament, news got out that newly excavated ancient ruins believed to hold the secret of immortality had a door at the very end that needed some form of a key to open it. Within time, a rumor surfaced among the people, hinting that the stone embedded within Urgeis may be the key to this door. In enters multiple fighters from around the globe, determined to unveil the mystery of the ancient ruins, and are set on obtaining Urgeis in the championship tournament. So, Urgeis is a 3D arena fighter akin to games like Power Stone. This changes from the standard side view camera and fixed direction for movement to 360 degree movement in an isometric camera angle. You got your low, medium, and highs, a guard, and a jump button, but unique to this game is the special button. Each fighter has a special gauge underneath their health bar. Using your special drains this gauge for the round and each fighter has their own special. Whether it's a plain and simple special attack, they take out their weapon, or in the case of Joe can transform, each character has their own thing to them. Besides that, it's a similar ballpark we're dealing with here. Arcade mode has you fighting against eight set opponents, you can fight two additional ones if you're fast enough, and then you finish off with the final boss, Django, which also has an interesting credits minigame. You're pinned into an arena with a second form of Django, and you have to see if you can kill it with the two daggers encased in glass before it kills you. Besides an all costume and an alternate ending you can get for one of the characters, beating this minigame doesn't really do anything. Also, yeah, to touch on that for a bit, Urgeis has FMV endings for the characters, which is an upgrade from Toeball 1. Two, technically three, endings to point out in particular are Han's endings, where he has a bad ending if you lose the credits minigame, showing him in his apartment still donned with his artificial leg, and a good ending where he gets his real leg back if you beat the minigame. There's also Enobuzz ending, where it's just him eating ramen at a shop. Thing is, this FMV loops until you press something. So you can literally watch Inaba eat ramen forever if you really wanted to. And again, might have to do with the fact that I'm easily amused, but I find that really funny. Guess the other two things to bring up before getting into the extra modes is unlockables and the elephant in the room. Eh, why well, not? We'll start with the elephant. So, there's FF7 characters in here for some reason. That's cool. I can only assume it's because FF7 was still taking the world by storm at this point, and they decided, screw it, we already put Cloud in Final Fantasy Tactics, just put him in more things. Heck, put in some of the main cast in there as well. So yeah, not only Cloud, but Sephiroth and Tifa are all playable characters, with Yuffie, Vincent, and Zack for some reason being unlockable. The other unlockable characters are Claire and Koji, the protagonists of this game's quest mode, which don't worry, we'll get to that, and to Django in his normal form. Lastly, there's the extra modes, and man, did they kinda go crazy here. There's infinite battle, which is basically survival mode, with the addition of being able to recover health or store in hearts based on the time remaining, and increase the number of hearts if you get a perfect. Battle runner, a race that can go anywhere from 3 to 15 laps, where you can not only beat each other up with those losing their health momentarily knocked out as they get their health back, but you can also get power-up stars that can exchange HP, increase your special gauge, 
or even reverse the direction the race takes place in, which I'm pretty sure has never been done before or since. So can we get that in a game nowadays just for the heck of it? Cause I honestly think that would be cool. <laughs> Next we have Battle Beach, a trio of challenges where you compete in a foot race, a run to capture a flag, and a hurdle course. Lastly, we have Battle Panel. You ever play Othello? It's basically that. You try to cover as much of the ground with your color as you can. If you place your color on both sides of your opponent's color, then you change their color to yours. The one with the most colored panels on the board wins. All these modes are pretty fun distractions, but you know what we're here for. Quest mode, which actually has a bit of a story to it. It stars archaeologists Claire and Koji as they investigate some ruins and search for a fabled source of immortality. Their searching eventually leads them to a town that houses the Forsaken Dungeon. And so Claire and Koji are off to see if this dungeon is hiding the secrets of immortality. Quest mode this time around is more like an action RPG. When entering the dungeon, you will end up exploring randomly generated maps filled with enemies, traps, and treasure. And you're tasked with descending further in the dungeon, arming yourself with the best gear you could find, and keep a well supply of food and items. Yeah, this is more RPG-like than even Tobol was. There's a multitude of weapons you can equip, shields to defend yourself with, magic to cast as a normal spell, or a more powerful variant known as an ultra spell. You gain experience from fighting enemies, you level up with your stats increasing, you eat food not only to satisfy your hunger meter, but also to increase your stats, or even your hunger meter itself if you eat while you're full. Weapons have durability, so if you want to keep a weapon, you'll need to go to the blacksmith in town to repair them. You can play as one of the two characters at a time, and can switch between the two by going to your room in the inn. If one character dies in the dungeon, then you can take control of the other and can resurrect them by finding where they died and picking up their spirit. There's four endings in this game depending on who you beat the final boss with and what you do with the item you get afterwards. It's like there's another game in here! It's god dang nuts! This whole game is nuts! I can't believe how much content there is in this game and how much of it is fun to play. There's only one issue I even have with this game and... It's a nitpick, but it is worth pointing out. The main menu sound is the most unneededly loud menu noise I think I have ever, ever heard in my god dang life. Like, it could have been just a little bit quieter. That's all I ask, but it's fine. It's just a nitpick. So, we, uh, we don't have eight composers this time around, but we do have Takayuki Nakamura, the composer of the first three Virtual Fighters. And while this soundtrack doesn't have as many varied styles of music as Tobol, Takayuki does bring catchy adrenaline-filled pieces to the forefront while also managing to replicate the style of early Squaresoft music. My favorite tracks that show this off are Continental Train, Trapped in battle for being a really good standard battle theme for quest mode. Fate for its sick guitar riffs. Ha <laughs> 
And I even dig this game's version of Those Who Fight from FF7. Guys is another great game by Dream Factory. Its multitude of fun modes, its extensive quest mode, and its solid gameplay all around makes for a really enjoyable romp. What's pretty cool is a few of the mechanics in this version of quest mode were adopted by Square and reused in Vagrant Story. So Square knew what they had, and Dream Factory was still going strong. And next time we talk about Dream Factory's escapades, I'll get to show off how much they really value dumb fun over all else with the Japan exclusive Toeball 2. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, be safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.